Coming up on the program, you got a small backyard, so do we. We're gonna go through some of the steps on what we're doing to maximize our space. And we're gonna plant leeks with my handy dandy little planting stick. All that and more coming up today on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener is sponsored in part by For all your non-GMO, heirloom, organic, vegetable, flowers, and herb seeds, visit dollarseed.com. Sioux Growing Supply, located in Wausau, Wisconsin, focusing on certified leaf compost, an excellent amendment for poor soil. With their new garden blend, improving soil structure in clay and sandy soil, great for creating new garden beds. Also available from Sioux, pre-filled trays and pots with professional potting soil mix or organic rice hull based potting soil mix. Bag and bulk of certified leaf compost also available. Visit SiouxGrowingSupply.com. Don't poison your soil with municipal water. Attach a body, mind, and soil hose and filter. Free shipping exclusively through the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com. Just click on the body, mind, and soil icon. Authentic Haven brand, soil conditioner for the home gardener. Easy to brew, 100% organic. Visit ManureTea.com. Rain Reserve. Reserving your rain, preserving our future. Rain Reserve, manufacturing of rainwater capturing capabilities. Visit rainreserve.com and use coupon code RAIN2016 to save 10% on your total purchase. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. I'm Joy Baird. We are in my sister-in-law's backyard garden, Holly's sister's backyard, to look at what we've got. We've not done anything in this garden to date this year. So we're going to look at what we're doing to maximize the space. Now there's 325 square feet of growing space in this backyard. It's a very small backyard. Maybe you have a yard very similar to this. We have a couple of different growing areas that we're going to utilize and still have a lot of open space for the kids to play in, sandboxes, picnic tables, barbecue. So it's not like the large garden where we've utilized every square possible inch of the backyard. This gives your family space this gives you a chance to grow some vegetables as well we'll start over here on these two beds these are this 14 foot long by seven foot wide we're gonna do a couple of things in this area here we're gonna have sweet corn growing here some people may think that's a great ideal some people may think it's a total waste of space we have built this soil over the last eight months with a tremendous amount of compost shredded or shredded leaves as well as use coffee grounds and we're going to use organic fertilizer at the time of planting to increase the success of that sweet corn. Now sweet corn is going to get about six foot tall. On the back side of that sweet corn we're going to take about a three foot swarth here and put some bush beans. Bush beans don't require a whole lot of sun. They need they can grow in partial shade which is what that corn will provide as the sun changes its direction over the, over the sky over the garden during the growing season. Then we're gonna have some tomatoes on the back side here. Yes, we had tomatoes here last year, but we're gonna scale back. We might just do uh, like three tomatoes and then three or four pepper plants to really utilize this bed to its maximum capacity and move some tomatoes into other areas. Along the shed here, along the garage, this is gonna be an extension here, 18 inches wide by 16 foot long, and we're gonna decide what we're going to put here. We're not completely certain what we're going to put here. We've dumped the compost pile out. This is a compost tumbler. We've dumped it out. We'll utilize this soil as we move to different areas. Now, this area here, I've got fenced off. I've worked it. This is where our leeks are going to go. We're going to put uh, two, four, six, about eight leeks here. Now, for those of you who have followed around, followed our videos for the last couple of years, we, put, we planted some ever-bearing strawberries in this eight foot by six, uh, five foot bed here last summer, early spring, or early summer. So the, the, a lot of the strawberries didn't take as well as I'd hoped them to take. 
So I take, I, I've dug out and maneuvered. I found eight ever-bearing strawberries that were still viable that came back over the, over the winter. And I put them along the shed here, along the garage. And we're gonna utilize this bed here for cabbage and kale and maybe a Brussels sprout or two. See how much we can pack in this little area. So I didn't want, you know, with eight plants in this bed, eight strawberry plants, it didn't make justifiable sense to leave this bed alone when we could just maneuver those plants up against the shed, maximize the production of other plants that would put on much more poundage of, of, veg, of, of food versus maybe four or five strawberries right now. So it made perfect sense to do that. Now up against the house here, this is the final bed of the backyard garden. So we've got our garlic growing here. Uh, we've got, I think 20, we planted 20, planted and about 15, 18 of them came up. So in about 40 days, that'll be ready to harvest and we can pull those out. Now here we had some volunteer lettuce plants come up, which I've maneuvered them into a root trap or two, a, a five gallon root trap or two, and we'll move that over up against the house. But this is where we're gonna plant potatoes again. We have planted them here before. Soil has been very good. We're gonna add some more nutrients to it. But this is kind of the place where the potatoes are going to go. That's just kind of what we've worked with. That's what we've got. When you're in a small space, it's hard to rotate crops around when space is not available. Like in the large garden, we can move from bed to bed. In an area like this, things get very condensed, very tight. So you got to use what you got, utilize how the space is used. We do have some potatoes that are volunteers that are coming up that we mixed, missed last year. Our two straw bales here that we're conditioning that will be our butternut squash and our spaghetti squash, which will vine out into the yard, take up a little space, but it's well worth it if you've never grown straw bales to, to utilize the space. If you don't want to go and dig up yards like we do. And this little area here, we're going to have some tomatoes in here. We're going to have some peppers in here. We're going to have cucumbers. Uh, we may even throw a bag of certified leaf compost on the ground, cut it open, do like we did last year and grow a couple of pumpkins out of it. We may also, grow pole beans here. Really not sure how this is all going to come together, but this just shows you this amount of small space we have in this yard and how we're going to utilize the space that has available. We also have, I think, five, six yacon plants that we want to put in this yard. We just don't know where yet. So you have a small space, you can plant a whole lot in this space. You just don't, you don't have to tear up the whole backyard like we've done in the large garden. So if you've got a yard like this, you can grow a lot in a very small space. In addition to everything we're doing in the sister-in-law's backyard garden with 320 square, or 25 square feet, we're also including a giant grow bag. This is courtesy of Root Trapper 2. This is called a Root Trapper Grounder. Now what this was initially designed for was to grow and air prune root, uh, tree roots. Well, we can take this in the edible vegetable garden and utilize it to grow more vegetables and fruits. This will work great for virtually any type of vegetables or fruits that you're gonna grow in your garden. It's three foot in diameter, it's a 60 gallon capacity grow bag, which we don't need all 60 gallons because it's 15 inches high and you don't need a, a bag, you don't need to fill it totally full of soil. We're gonna fill it about nine inches high. Now there's some ways you wanna do this. This is a great giant grow bag, a minimal cost, and at the large garden, we've got three of these. We're going to grow peppers, we're growing beets, and we're going to grow tomatoes in them. This one will also be utilized for tomatoes. And with a to with three foot diameter, I'm kind of guessing here that we can get three tomato plants in here safely. Kind of one on each side here and one in the middle. It's going to be a giant, massive jungle, but with good, and that's going to be because we're adding good certified leaf compost. Now, we just can't put this on the ground because we're gonna have weeds grow up through it. So what we wanna do is we've mowed the grass here. Now you could remove this grass and just be done with it, but that's a lot of work. So what we wanna do is we wanna take some cardboard, a couple layers if you have it available, and just make a mat here. Um, break this open, get a little more surface area. Now we can set our grow bag on top of it. Now what we'll do is we'll fill this up and then we'll come back in here and trim this around. Now what will happen is, and this is the same concept if you're doing a raised bed, 
you want to put some barrier between the ground and the bed in order to reduce the, uh, the amount of weeds that could potentially can grow up into the, grow, into the growing area. So that's about good here. Now we're going to have sweet corn here which will not really affect the tomato growth because of the way the sun will go across the garden during the peak, peak times of the growing season. So I want to make sure I want to make sure this is where I want it before I start adding soil because it will not move after that. That's pretty happy with that. And as we fill it, we can maneuver it. Now, a couple things I'm going to do here. I'm going to add some really poor quality topsoil strictly because, as a base, strictly because it's been in the shed for a number of years and we really don't, uh, the, uh, the sister in law really doesn't know why they bought it. So we're going to add this really, it's terrible soil, but by putting it on the bottom and then putting certified leaf compost on top of it, we will regenerate the, the goodness of this topsoil. So sometimes it's a little hard here to get started, but we're going to uh, get a base going here. Let's see here, now, now it's time to start shaping this here. Let's see here. A little base. It's a little higher on this side, which is fine. All right. And see some of these edges here that are hanging out. I can, what I could do is, well, what I will do is when I cut them off, I'll shove them underneath here, just to add more of a, of a, a base between the ground and the bag. So here's the other bag of really bad soil as a base. Um, all right. Now, you can go ahead and add your certified leaf compost in there and be done with it. This will take about four bags, but what I'm also going to do here is I've got a lot of shredded paper. Shredded paper is a natural material, so I'm just going to add that shredded paper in there. I've got a piece of cardboard there I will shove under. There we go. Now with this cardboard, you want to remove as much as the tape on it as possible because over the next couple of years, this will break down to nothing underneath here and it'll kill all the grass off. And then a lot of the microorganisms from the natural soil and the grow bag will interact with one another because of the mesh netting. So keep that in mind. So I'm just gonna add, there's not much, about an inch layer here. This will dissipate really quickly. Now, the magic stuff, the certified leaf compost. These are about two, approximately two cubic foot bags. Look at that soil. Black, rich compost. All right. That's one bag. Two. Because of the added material we used earlier, this may only require three bags. Well, I got a little portion right there. Now I'm just going to take and maneuver this, get the shape that I want. Try to get a circle best I can. Look at that. All right. Add this little portion of one we had left over. Look at that. That's pretty. And now, Root Maker has a variety of different sizes. You see everything from one gallon, three gallon, five gallon, all the way up to the 60 gallon grow bag here that can be utilized in the edible garden. So it's that easy, that quick to have an instant raised bed for any type of vegetable that you're planning to grow in your garden. We're going to plant leeks here along the side of the shed garage in this little bed that I, I've made. It's 18 inches wide by you know, about three foot long. And we're going to put the leeks in the ground and they're going to get watered really easily because of the rain coming off of the garage. Now the garage is asphalt shingled and that can be a concern for some of you. And if it is, you want to plant these somewhere else. For us, it's not a concern for us. So we're going to go ahead and plant these. Now leeks are some of the easiest vegetables to grow. If you're not growing leeks, you're missing out on a plant that you can put in the ground and virtually do nothing to 
for 130 days, come back and harvest it. Leeks will also are also uh, they can be left in the ground over winter. They'll regrow a little bit in the spring as they are in the large garden for us, and we can harvest them until the point where they put on that seed pod. You want to, and then you get thousands of free seeds. But you want to, you can still harvest them early in the spring, and that's what some people will do. Now with planting leeks. They're different than onions because leeks will grow anywhere you plant, and doesn't matter what zone you're in. Onions, on the other hand, if you're you know late day, a uh, long day, neutral day, or short day, you got to figure out where you live based on the what variety. It's kind of complicated, and that's why a lot of people fail at growing onions because they're growing the wrong type of onion. With well, leeks, you don't have to worry about that. So now with this bed here, I've weeded it. I've also added a little coffee grounds to it. We'll give it a little nitrogen spike. Ni uh, coffee grounds are about two percent nitrogen. Uh, about 0.2 percent, or 0.2 on uh, phosphorus and 0.7 on potassium. And I've also added a little 466 fertilizer, simply because there was like one scoop left in the bottom of the bag, and I went ahead and put him put it on here. Worked all that in lightly. Still a little coffee grounds here. Now, told you about my my uh, little planting stick. You can use any device. The reason you want to plant these with a, a device here, and I'll show you, you want to dibble them. Uh, and that means you simply take it and let's say we're going to plant here anyway. So we're going to take, create a hole, and that's about three inches deep. Remove some of these leeks here. Let's see, it's anything that's kind of uh, weak looking, I'm not going to plant. I want stuff that's strong, and I do have a number of strong plants here. On a leek, you want to typically in North America, we eat the white bleached portion of the root. In other portions of the world, the whole plant is consumed and the whole plant is edible. But for North Americans, we are always taught to eat the white portion. So you can eat the whole plant uh, in a variety of different ways. So you take your plant, your root, your leek, and you plant it all the way. If the roots are long, you wind the roots up and you just get it in there, get it all the way in there. And some soil will fall on that and that's fine. So what is happening here is you're creating a um, a portion of that plant that will be bleached of, away from the sun under the soil so you can get more of that white portion. Now, if you're growing these for the purpose of consuming the whole plant, really makes no difference. But this is the way uh, many people will plant them. And you want to space these. I'm going to space these about seven inches apart here. Make another hole. Some of this stuff will fall in it. Take another root and some of this dead stuff on here, we just pull it off, not, not a big deal. All right, and we'll just plant it in the hole. Get it all down in there. Now, what is going to happen here is we'll get these plants in, then we'll come back with, and water them with some mupu tea. And what happens is that hole will begin to fill in with soil. You don't want to initially fill it in right now, but as you water, you get water to the roots and particles of soil begin to surround the actual stalk of the plant. And that's where that bleached portion comes in. And it really looks pretty whenever you harvest a, a big stalk of leek that is bigger than the diameter of a broom handle. And we've had many successful harvests with that. And there's so many things you can do with leeks. So if you're not growing leeks, now's the time you may be able to still find some of these at your local garden center, the actual starts. These are smaller than what you would find, but uh, growing them from seed, really a little late in the season for that, but it may also work. So grow leeks if you've never grown them. Take a look at how effortless this it is to successfully grow leeks in your vegetable garden. Thanks for joining us. Join us again next time for more organic gardening and food preserving. I'm Joy Baird, and this has been the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. For more information, please visit thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com.